H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So yes, department ID is a primary key in the department table. Now this column is used for the linking over here in the employee table. Now since it is helping us you know to link the two tables, don't you think we have to give some special name to it? Yes, yes, we will give some special name to it and we call it as foreign key. Okay, the special name that we are giving for this employee table is nothing but foreign key. Okay, can you try to define this now? What's the meaning of foreign key? I want a definition. See, I have given you the meaning, right? It is used to link the two tables and then what is the role that is playing here, okay? Yes, how do you define the foreign key? I want a definition. Can I say like this? Foreign key is a primary key of another table used for linking the two tables Yes, can this be a definition? If you want, you can note it down. Okay, I guess you must be done. Fine. After this, there are two more two more terminologies that we will be able to understand. The meaning of database and then the database management system.
Okay. So we need to understand two more terminologies here apart from the primary key and foreign key. And that is the names that is given to the different tables. Okay. Now can you tell me what is the common com column between these two tables? What is the common column between these two tables? Department ID, correct? Now, what is the role of a department ID in the department table? What is the role of department ID in the department's table? Department ID is playing the role of primary key. Okay. What about its role in the employee table? Is it acting as a foreign key? Yes. Now since the department ID is acting as a primary key in the department table, we call this as a parent. Okay. And since the department ID is acting as a foreign key, in the employee table, we call it as a child. Clear everybody? So what we need to do? Identify the common column. Here it is department ID. If that common column is acting as a primary key, that table becomes the parent. If that common column is acting as a foreign key, then that table becomes a child. If you want, you can note it down. Very important thing. Okay. Shilpa, it is on my screen here. Please note it down. See here, Shilpa and Gita, I am going to repeat it for you. The common column between the two tables is what? Department ID. Okay. Since that department ID is acting as a primary key in the department table, we call the departments as parent. The department ID column, it is acting as a foreign key in the employee table. We call it as a child table. Manisha, table is a parent or a child, not the column. Is it clear, Shilpa and Gita? Yes, did you note down this one? Yes, everybody noted? Is that done, all of you?
Yes, it is done or not? I don't receive any message from anybody. Yes? Okay. Fine. So did you understand what is the parent and what is the child? It all depends on the common column. If the common column is a primary key, it becomes a parent. If that common column is a foreign key, it becomes a child. Simple concept. There is one more thing that we have to understand now. It's the database and then database management system, the two terminologies which we will see now. Yes, what do you know about the database or what do you mean by a database? Can you tell me? What's the database? What is the meaning of database? Database is nothing but it is a collection of information that is organized so that it can be easily accessed, managed and updated. Correct? What is a database? It is a collection of the information that is organized so that it can be easily accessed, managed and updated. And what is database management system? The system that enables the database to be created, accessed, managed or updated, we call it as a database management system. It's a software. Okay, we want to store the information, we want to access the information, we want to modify the information, delete the information, insert the new information and all this it is possible if you have a software to manage your database and that is called as the database management system. Now there is an example over here, the one that we were discussing in the beginning. So we have a car manufacturer over here. So we can have a database for a car manufacturing company and it has many entities like employees, customers and suppliers. So we have the tables for them. We have the employee name, department, designation and salary which are nothing but the properties of the entity information about the entity and these become the columns. So this is how the data is organized in the database. Okay. Clear everybody? Okay. So this was the basics about the SQL database. Okay, Srinivas, I am going to repeat it for you. See here, at the car manufacturer that is at the level of a company, we can have a database. Employees, customers and suppliers, these are entities because we need to store the information about them or data about them. So these become the tables. You have the employee name, department, designation, salary, the property of the entities. These become the columns. Clear? Sure, Parish. Write it down. Okay. Previous slide? No. There is no need to take down the definition. I'll send you this slide.
Yes, is it done everybody? Okay, fine. Now you have understood the basics about the SQL database. The next thing that we need to understand is the application of the SQL for a QA. So as a QA, why you should learn this database concepts? Okay. Now let's assume that we have a loan application here in which we enter the name of a person. The person is also going to enter what is the amount that he wants for the loan. Then what is the duration of the loan amount? the address and all the details ok and click on the submit button. The person should get a message that loan application is submitted successfully. This is the tracking ID or a tracking number. Correct? After the loan application is successfully submitted, he should get a page wherein this kind of message is displayed. Now can you tell me what are the steps that we need to follow to test this feature and also what are the expectations, expected result? Can you tell me the steps and the expected result to test this feature? Divya, I am repeating the question. We have the feature over here. I want you to tell me the steps and the expected result to test this feature. Can I say that in the steps? Open the loan application page, enter all the valid data. Okay, can I say that? Open the loan application page, enter all the valid data, click on the submit button. Can these be the steps? And what is the expected outcome? A new page should open with a message saying that Transaction is successful or let's say your application is successfully accepted and the transaction ID should be given or a tracking ID should be given. Okay. Application received, application yes. Sometimes if it is rejected, you should get a rejection message. You should get some message there, right? But is that all? That is sufficient for the testing process? See, you have submitted the application form. And then you have also got the result over here. But what is the guarantee that this information has gone to our database? Because it is a loan application that is being submitted over here. And we are saying that your loan application is successfully received means, don't you think this Details should go into our database. Yes. It should go or it should not go. It should go, right? Whatever information you have entered, it should get entered into the database here. But who is going to check this? Here in the front end, you are testing, okay? You perform the steps, you get some message over here, the result is there. And then you know it is appearing, you mark it as fast, this is fine. But what about this backend thing? And also now let's say a person is trying to modify the details in his loan application. Now initially he had applied for about $50,000. Now he wants $40,000 only. So he has made the modification. Or let's say he is going to change his correspondence address or the mailing address. And he wants to update some data over here. He clicks on the update button. You get a message that updations are done. But are you sure that you know these updations are even made here in the database? 
we need to check that correct and how do we check that using the back end testing or let's say the database testing so you can do the testing even on the database you can cross verify whether the data is getting saved here in the database whether it is getting modified whenever you require so you need to check all these things okay and more about this will be discussed during your etl testing classes or data warehouse testing classes for now you can understand that as a tester you should also test on the database but how how do you view the database then okay as a qa how much of sql queries should you learn let's see that okay see you are going to be a qa all that you can do is you can verify the data that is present in the database okay creation of the tables modification of the tables deleting something from the database inserting some new data into the database all these are not your task this is to be done by your database developer as a qa you should only be able to view the data in the database that's it so you will learn only the select queries over here in the sql which is used to view the data in the database so we will use the select queries only to view the data in the database is it clear everybody so you are not going to create the database you are not going to modify delete insert no that thing you should not do because it is to be done by the database developer right if you try to you know do something and then the data gets really modified so much you know that it gets corrupted then the database developer again has to refresh and it's going to be lot of task for him okay so do not try to touch anything there in the database just try to view the data that is present in the database okay is it clear everybody fine now we will go to the next thing so you know the application now now we will start the execution of the queries on the tool okay so we will be doing the execution of queries on the tool but let's see what exactly is the sql what is the stored we need to understand that first of all okay what's the meaning of that i'll give you an example okay now there is a training coordinator here in the h2k infosys and this person is a person who is enrolling all the students in the h2k infosys for all the courses and he has all the information that is related to the students of the h2k infosys he knows or you know he has a list of the names of the people who are enrolled then what date they enrolled what course they have enrolled okay which uh, sorry who is their instructor what is the batch that they have in, enrolled how much of you know payment they have done what is their email address what is the phone number so he has all the details about each and every student of the h2k infosys correct courses like qa courses like ba and then the project management the development courses like java dotnet so whatever courses that the candidates are enrolled he has the complete data over here correct now let's say i want to find out the email ids of 7 pm eastern batch okay i do not want all this information because it's not my concern right why should i know who is enrolled in a ba why should i know who is enrolled in other courses like java or a dotnet why should i know how much you know the payment they have done this is not all my concern what i want is i want the list of emails okay of my 7 pm batch 
7 pm eastern batch because I want to send them some materials. So I send this request to my training coordinator. I ask him you know to please send me the list of emails of the people who have enrolled in the 7 pm eastern batch so that I can send them the materials. Now the training coordinator checks his database and he is going to respond to me. Okay. I send him the request and he is giving the response to me. And what is the response that he is giving? He will give me the list of email IDs of all the candidates of this 7 pm batch. Okay. So do you see here? There will be a lot of information that will be stored on the database. But each and every time we don't require all of them. Okay, we require a partial information every time. We require the information in a different format. Are you getting everyone? Now, can you tell me what is the language that I should use to send my request to the training coordinator? What is the tool that I am going to use to send my request to the training coordinator? First of all, tell me which language I should use. Yes, what language? I want answers from everybody. What language should I use to send my request to the training coordinator? Language Shilata, not the tool. Should I use a SQL language for him? Yes. Can I send him the request in the SQL language? Some people say yes. Okay. Some people here are saying yes. Now tell me people who are saying yes. Is he a machine? Is he some SQL database? Okay. What is he? He is a person. Okay. He is a training coordinator and he is just a person. He is not some kind of machine you know. That I have to use this kind of SQL language on him. Don't try it on him please. Okay. Don't give him a call tomorrow and then, you know, start talking to him in a SQL language. He doesn't understand that. Okay. What does he understand? He understands the simple English language. Okay. Yes. Are you clear? Some people are saying SQL over here. Is that clear? We are not going to use the SQL on that person. Okay. We use a simple English language to send the request to him. And how do you send this request to him? Either you can send an email to him. I can post an email saying that, okay, give me the list of um, all the 7 p.m. Eastern batch. Or what I can do is I can give him a call over his phone and you request him that please send me the emails of the 7 p.m. Eastern batch. This is what we can do. Now, no matter whether it is an email, whether it is a call that I am making, I am going to use the same language. My language does not change because I am writing an email or my language does not change because I am giving a call. It's going to be the common language whether I write an email or give him a call. Is that clear everybody? I hope so. Yes? I am not surprised with your answer when you said SQL because in every batch everybody says the same thing. So it's not at all a new thing for me. Okay? Yeah, fine. So now we have a database over here. Okay? So to this database we can send a request to get some specific data because we do not want all the information that is stored on the database. Huge information will be stored. I don't need all that information every time. I have a specific request. Okay. And I want a specific response for that. So I send a, a request to my database. This kind of request I send and then I am expecting some kind of response from the database. For example, let's say 
here is our training database and then you know I send a request over here for the emails of 7 p.m. batch and then I get a response from the database the list of the emails of 7 H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.